Hi, I'm Kevin Wassler from Nestle Professional. And today I'm going to show a couple of basic, simple culinary techniques that will help further some of your education as you move forward in the culinary field. First, we're going to do a demonstration on how to make a basic mayonnaise. And second, we're going to do a simple tomato concasse. First, I'm going to show you some of the mise en place that you need for both of these recipes, and then we'll get started with the demonstration. Okay, so once we have all of our mise en place together, what we're going to start off with is some fresh whole eggs. So you have a choice here on the eggs. You can use a pasteurized egg, which will come in a carton, and you can use and measure that according to how many egg yolks that you need. And the egg yolks in this case, to prevent any type of foodborne illness such as salmonella or E. coli, most chefs will use a pasteurized egg yolk uh, in place of a whole egg. If you choose to use a whole egg, you may want to coddle the egg. And what I mean by that is you're going to take a whole uncracked egg, place that into a pot of boiling water for approximately one minute, remove that egg, place the whole egg in the shell in an ice bath, lots of water, lots of ice, and let that chill. Once that's chilled, that will remove all of the bacteria that is caused from salmonella or E. coli. From there, you can then crack the eggs, separate them, and then get to the yolk, okay? So we're gonna add three egg yolks to the bowl. And next, we're gonna add in the Dijon mustard. So you have a choice here of either Dijon mustard or dry mustard. Based upon the fact that there's a little more vinegar inside of the mustard will impart a little bit more flavor into the mayonnaise. But either way, the mustard will give it flavor, but with that extra hint of vinegar in there, it'll give an extra uh, bounce of flavor. So to this, we're gonna add in the juice of one lemon. I'm gonna squeeze that right on top, okay? Keep this aside later just in case you do need any more for flavor. Once you've got these in three ingredients in the bowl, you wanna combine these. You want to whisk this as much as you can until you get to a point that it actually gets frothy. Start to see some bubbles forming up on the side of the bowl. Just in a back and forth motion, real, real quick. The process of making mayonnaise for whatever sauce or condiment that you're making, you can do it this way which I would suggest that you do if you're doing for testing purposes. If you're gonna be in your classroom and doing this, this is the best way to do it, just to see that you actually can make this emulsion by hand in a classical format. When you do get into the industry, and you decide to make a mayonnaise from scratch, which you don't see too much anymore. You can choose to use a stand mixer. You can use a food processor. And in some cases, you can even use a blender as well. So what we're doing at this point, you'll just have in the bottom of the blender and then slowly remove the small cap on the top of the blender or the food processor and start to drizzle in your oil. So we're at a point now where this is, has somewhat of a little bit of a consistency to it. The frothiness is there as well. So as we let this just rest and sit here, we're slowly going to add in a stream of oil continually whisking this as quick as we can. And again, the fact that the bowl is actually sitting on the cutting board and not moving, or if you're gonna have this wrapped with a towel around it, will aid in not having the bowl move too much. So as you're slowly adding in this oil, whisking back and forth, we're getting a nice emulsion that's flowing here now. If you get to a point where you think that this might start to break, Slow down your oil, okay? Maybe even just put it down. Just get in there and whisk it a little bit harder, okay? Get that back together. Right now we're at a consistency where it's just about coming together. Slowly get that stream of oil going again. You can hold it up pretty high, maybe 10 to 12 inches above the bowl, right over it, and continue to whisk in. If this happens to get too thick on your end, that's why we have the water here. So as it starts to thicken up, as we're adding this in, don't be afraid to add just a little cool water to the bowl, okay? This'll turn it white for just a second or so. Once you mix it back in, 
it'll get back to that nice egg yolky color that you have. And we're going to continue to add the rest of the two cups of oil that we have here. That we're now you'll get to a point where this will get so thick and emulsified, like a dressing would, you really won't have a chance of having this break on you. So we're nice and thick right now. We're going to add in about the last two tablespoons of oil that we have here and whisk that in quickly. Okay, now we've added all of that. Get that whisk one more time around real nice. And at this point, we're going to add in a couple of pinches of salt and pepper. Whisk that together as well. Basically get to the point and you're happy with the consistency of the mayonnaise. Okay, if you need a little more water in here, add some in. If you feel like you need a little bit more lemon juice, add that in as well. Give it a taste. See how it actually looks on the spoon. This holds up nice. Okay, so this is sitting on the spoon real nice. It's where you want it to be. You don't want it too loose. You don't want it too thick. Give it a taste. That's nice. At this point, you've got a nice emulsified mayonnaise or dressing. From here, you're gonna to start to make any of your cold sauces or dressings based upon the mayonnaise that you've just made. So your options, add a little bit of fresh herbs. Here we have some rosemary. If you were to chop that up fine and add that into here, would make a wonderful rosemary aioli. If you roasted some garlic and puree, uh, puree that as well, add that into the mayonnaise, it's fantastic. Options too for a remoulade sauce, a tartar sauce, anything that's mayonnaise based, you could start with this as a dressing for coleslaw. This can just be a regular mayonnaise that you're gonna use as a sandwich spread or a topping. And then again, as you're emulsifying this in some cases, if you add a few more egg yolks into this, this can be used in a hot application so that it won't break. Okay, so this is our demonstration on uh, making a mayonnaise from scratch. So importantly, remember, uh, utilize the right eggs, and if you don't, coddle an egg. It only takes a few minutes to use that as a source for a raw egg. Secondly, uh, keep all of your tools sanitized. You want a clean bowl, a clean spatula, whisks, everything that you're using to make it. Refrigerate this as soon as you're done, okay? Keep this in the refrigerator. Um, and then based upon a recipe that you're gonna follow, there's a little bit more mustard, there's a little bit more lemon juice, there's a little bit more oil. But basically this is the uh, formula and the procedure to actually look and combine and make this into an emulsified mayonnaise as a dressing or a sauce. Hopefully this was helpful. Our second demonstration today is gonna be for a basic tomato concasse. What you'll need for this will be some fresh Roma tomatoes, a pot of boiling water, an ice bath in order to shock the tomatoes afterwards, a empty bowl to use for the core of the tomato, the seeds, and for the skin of the tomato, and then also two serving vessels to either keep on the line where you're gonna be serving or for storage. You'll also need a chef knife, a paring knife, and a slotted spoodle or spoon in order to remove the tomatoes from the boiling water and take them out of the ice bath. So let's get started on the demo. First step for the tomato concasse is to remove the core from the top of the tomato and at the same time, put a small X into the skin at the top of the tomato. What you don't wanna do is cut too far down into the top of the tomato to remove any flesh but just lightly score and X marks over the top, just enough through the top of the tomato to pierce the skin and cut through. We're gonna do five tomatoes for today's demonstration. Ahead of time, you definitely wanna have your ice water bath ready to go so that once we take the tomatoes out of the boiling water, it's ready to go. So all five tomatoes have had stems removed off of the top and then we've put an X marks over the top of the tomatoes. We're ready to submerge them in the water. Take the tomatoes and submerge them into a pot of boiling water for approximately 10 to 15 seconds. Now depending upon their ripeness, it'll either be a little less time or just a little more time. 
And what you're looking to do here is just to kind of pierce and get the, the, the water throughout the skin of the tomato. And then once it's gotten to a, a good enough temperature or texture, you can check them. You're going to take them out and put them right into a nice water bath. Give them a check, feel the top, and these start to peel off just like this. So these tomatoes will be ready to take out. Turn off your water, drain the egg, right there, drain the tomatoes, put them right in to the ice water bath, get them fully submerged. We have blanched the tomatoes in boiling water for approximately 10 to 15 seconds. We added them into an ice water bath, keep them in there for about three or four minutes until they're properly chilled, and then we're gonna peel and see the tomatoes. So what exactly are you gonna use for a tomato concasse in a dish? So we're gonna show two different cuts. So we can do a fine concasse, which would be used for garnishing, while doing a rough concasse will be used for all other purposes, such as in ingredients in a dish or in a sauce. So we'll show a couple of different ways when we get through this process. So once you've gotten these into a water bath, what you're doing, um, some of these, the, the peel is actually coming off. So slowly, you're just gonna pull peel off of the tomato without getting much or any of the flesh. And if you blanch these the right way and it's a nice ripe tomato, you're just going to peel off the skin of the tomato coming through. And don't be afraid. Use a nice sharp knife to get in here and get underneath the skin. So what we removed from this one here has given us a nice firm tomato with all the skin peeled off. Okay, so again, get underneath that first little mark of the X that you've done, and then slowly start to peel down the tomato to remove the skin. Keep all of your mise en place whenever you're doing anything, and always have this little extra bowl next to you. Have all your uh, tools that you're gonna use for the day brought out and kept in front of you. Keep your station organized, keep it neat, keep it clean. Uh, your instructors in your culinary class, I'm sure will be grading you on your organizational skills, your knife skills, uh, as well as your sanitation skills and how you can actually show uh, some of your waste afterwards. So right here, um, not wasting too much of the product at the end of your, your session or your class, you can actually go to the chef at the end and say that this is some of my waste here. So based upon food waste these days, we don't want to have too much that's in this bowl, but you're going to have some waste. Okay, so we'll continue with the rest of these tomatoes, and then I'll show you the process of actually seeding them and then cutting them into the dices that we want to cut them into. Okay, so our next step in the process of a concasse. We have our uh, peeled plum tomatoes, and we can cut these in half or in quarters. And if you decide to cut them into quarters, you can slowly peel away, I'm sorry, cut away just the bottom of the tomato where the inner membrane and the seeds are. And you can discard this part into your waste bowl. So again, a nice sharp knife to get into here. That's always perfect. You can also use the tip of the knife or a spoon, remove any excess seeds that you have in here. And now you've gotten to a point where you've got these tomatoes that are broken down. You also have an option. If you were to cut the same tomato and the fleshy side that is inside here, you can gently squeeze into the bowl and remove any of the seeds as well too. So depending upon how much you cook down your tomato, You'll either have a nice firm tomato to use or it'll be a little bit softer and you're basically just going to squeeze out the inside of the tomato. We'll do one more like that. Cut it open, squeeze it into your bowl and get the seeds out. Okay, so now we have two of the tomatoes here that are actually ready to go to cut. So. The smaller ones that you cut into a quarter and using a chef knife, you have a better application to get them into your julienne strips if you're going to use these for a dice for a garnish. Okay, so basically just cutting these 
into a julienne strip. I'll take a few, bring them this way, and get a nice cut on them so you can get a nice either medium or small or fine dice, depending upon the dish that you're making. These you're going to do for a garnish. Pretty much going to do these um, for day of service or evening of service. The texture of the tomato um, will actually uh, look, get a little bit softer as the day goes on. And at the same time, uh, you also want to have that kind of that freshness and the color to it as well. These I've cut a little bit larger. And if you were going to do these as part of a dish, you're just going to run a knife through them and just get a nice rough cut on the tomato. So the concasse in two different formats of cutting the tomato. And as you can see, you've got one tomato that serves two different purposes for the dish that you're making. So I hope you found these demonstrations useful. Always go back to your textbooks, your cookbooks, re go over what you've learned, practice a lot of the techniques that we talked about today, uh, and anything else that you are going to cook during the course of your career, either in school or thereafter. Uh, another word of advice is to continue reading. You may go back and look at some of your cookbooks, and in the years to come, you're probably going to purchase a lot of cookbooks as well. There's some um, really good ones that uh, talk about uh, why food is the way it is. This is called On Food and Cooking, it's the Science of the Kitchen. Great book that just tells you a lot about what food's all about, uh, a lot of chemistry that's involved with it. If you go back to some of the classics, this is the Escoffier. Uh, this has got a cookbook and everything from the fine art of cookery um, by August Escoffier. This is a fantastic book as well, too. Great to just have on your shelf. And then in general, just for food knowledge, the, um, the Food Lover's Companion is a uh, softbound book that's got a lot of information about pretty much anything that you want to know about. So some good useful material just in general on uh, just uh, recipes and everything about food. And then there's a bunch of books out there too that get into not so much about food but just about travels and different food in different countries and stories that are written by uh, different people across the, across the world that talk about food. So continuing education like that, take a lot of notes, um, go back and just find out what really uh, gets you going about food and uh, it's the best that I can tell you. So thank you very much for joining us today and uh, from my kitchen to yours, thank you.